Uh, well, I, I you know, uh, came here when I was a very young mm -hmm. child, and this country has been incredibly good to me and my family. Um, and you know, it became kind of a, a calling for me to try to give back and you know make sure that this country was there for the next families who needed it, like mine. And uh, so now I have that opportunity. And so here in this office, I do everything I can to, what I say, grow and grow and strengthen the middle class. You know, if you're working poor, you're willing to better yourself and work hard. I want you to be able to ascend into the middle class, like my family did. And if you're in the middle class, we want you to survive and prosper. And then, uh, you know, if you want to start a business, grow a business, we want you to succeed as well. Um, so it's basically making sure everyone can get on the up escalator of the economy, mm -hmm. and that's the primary mission of this office. Okay. And uh, so we are U.S. Impact. So we want to talk a little about, about the U.S.-India relationship. How do you feel? How strong that is? How weak that is? How that can improve? Whether it be in trade or security? Mm -hmm. We'll start with trade, I guess. Yeah, the relationship is uh, strong and it's, at this point, it's uh, a, a relationship that's grown stronger with each succeeding mm -hmm. administration. Um, you know, I think it started with Clinton and then George W. Bush and then uh, Barack Obama and now President Trump. I think all four have done an admirable job of trying to strengthen the relationship uh, on security issues, but on uh, commercial and cultural ties as well. So I, I'm really heartened by that. I think that this relationship transcends politics. And you had mentioned investment and the economy for the middle class is one of the keys to why you want to yeah. be here. So Indian Americans really value small business investments, and whether that be here or abroad. Right. So how do you think you in office can help them, whether it be through immigration, to come to this country and open their small businesses, or Indian Americans here who have small businesses, how can you help them? Well, I think there are a variety of things that we can do. We can make sure that um, you know the government uh, does everything possible to level the playing field for competition, for new startups, for smaller businesses to make sure that they can you know um, succeed without having to fear being uh, stomped on mm -hmm. uh, through you know any kind of anti-competitive practices and so forth. Um, we need to make sure the regulatory and tax environment is friendly uh, to small businesses. <coughs> and we also need to reward them for doing the right thing. So for instance, I have something called the Invest in American Workers Act, uh, which basically uh, you know, gives tax credits for those companies that actually spend more to train their workers. Um, I also believe that the government has an important role in education and making sure that we have a skilled workforce to take the positions that exists at these businesses because one of the biggest challenges we face as a, as a country is called the skills gap. Mm -hmm. There are 6.7 million jobs uh, that are currently unfilled because employers, many of them small businesses, can't locate the skills or the experience necessary to fill them. In the meantime, uh, two-thirds of Americans do not have a four-year college degree. Um, and, and so what we need to do is equip Americans with the skills to take these jobs. And if we do that, it's going to help all businesses, including small and, and other businesses, grow and thrive. Okay. And that's my bill, to modernize career technical education mm -hmm. uh, and meet that skills gap. And it's moving in the Senate right now. So the skills gap you're talking about, is there a way that we can perhaps make a a education easier, getting those student visas from abroad to come help fill those skills, whether they be from India or any other? Country so, so there are two issues there, right? Mm -hmm. Student visas would be for people to come and study mm -hmm. at our universities, um, and I think that we should uh, make student visas uh, available to, to the best and the brightest from around the world, uh, especially in the STEM fields and other places mm -hmm. where we have a real shortage. Our first priority should be to grow you know, domestic talent. But um, as long as there are gaps, we, we want to fill them with the best and the brightest from around the world. The other um, part of that is we um, you know, want to make sure that uh, if there are skilled jobs that we can't fill with local talent, that again, we make those available to the best and the brightest to be able to fill them. And so um, you know, I think that uh, if we have a policy in this country that's welcoming of talent, 
then we're going to welcome prosperity. Mm -hmm. I think that's the bottom line. Okay, how do you think we can have that welcoming mindset? How do we open our arms more? I think we have to uh, make sure that everybody understands there's a win-win mm -hmm. from welcoming talent, right? Um, if someone thinks that it's a zero-sum game, and that if I bring talent from someplace else, that means I lose my job, they will naturally be resistant. But if you say, I'm gonna welcome talent, I'm gonna welcome capital, I'm gonna welcome a new business to start here based on the latest technology, and that will employ more Americans and grow the economy, people will be excited. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to make sure happens. It's gotta be a win-win for everybody. If it's not a win-win, then there's gonna naturally be political resistance. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about human rights initiatives. So, okay. as you, I'm sure you know about India, there's a lot of gender violence, trafficking issues, or sexual violence as well. What is important to you to try and help out, and how do you think we can achieve that? Well, I think that um, whatever we can do to make sure that, at least on the receiving end or demand end, whatever you want to call it, that we do everything we can to reduce that. Yeah. Um, then there will be less, uh, you know, activity in that particular area around the world, right? Um, so that's that's on us who so are trying to crack down. Mm -hmm. um, there are some, you know, international trafficking rings and so forth, and we have to do our part in cooperating with foreign authorities in bringing an end to those uh, particular syndicates and mm -hmm. so forth. So I'll try to wrap it up. Okay, so, so the Indian caucus maybe a bridge between politics and the Indian community at large. How do you think they're doing, and what more do you think they could be doing? I think they're doing well. I think that we have to do um, everything we can to um, act as a bridge between uh, India and the United States. Um, there's tremendous interest on Capitol Hill in strengthening those ties, and so this India caucus can play a vital role mm -hmm. uh, going forward. Okay, and then just finally, do you have any messages to the Indian American community? Anything you want to say? To Anything them? I want to say? Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, sorry to put you on the spot, but. Well, I think that, you know, the Indian American, I, 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 I'm one of four Indian Americans in the U.S. House. Mm -hmm. I call us affectionately the Samosa Caucus. <laughs> <laughs> and so we need to grow and strengthen the Samosa Caucus uh, over time and make sure that more people get involved. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody has to vote. And there happen to be elections this year. So you get to really exercise that right.